William Hill, the home of betting. Well, a very warm welcome to RPTV. I'm joined by Nick Watts and Graham Rodway. And we'll be looking at part one, which is the World Hurdle, day three of the Cheltenham Festival. But it's great to see you again then, gentlemen. Now, this race is building up to potentially a classic, where you have the, the old veteran, the warrior, Big Bucks, uh, really tried to, yeah, obviously create history by winning this for the fifth time. Annie Power potentially is a small stumbling block in his way. Now, basically around the two to one mark is joint favourites for this. Graham, I'll come to you first out of the two. Which one would you be looking at? Would you go and back them at their current prices? I like Annie Power, um, wherever she goes, actually. I think she's a bit of a superstar. It's hard to tell entirely the strength of her form because obviously she's beaten Zarkander a couple of times, uh, won a bit of an egg and spoon race last time, but you can hardly do it uh, any more impressive than the way she's been doing it. She's still unbeaten. Uh, Willie Mullin seems to rate her very highly and he has obviously got a bunch of great horses and she's obviously working up amongst them. I don't really think it'll matter whether she stays three miles. Usually in this race, I say you need the turbo. You know, you need to really You're stay a, a on warrior, like a dower stayer. A warrior, yeah. A warrior, yeah. But I don't think she's going to need to be a warrior or a dower stayer. Does, it, does think... it not concern you she's never been home and extended two and a half not miles? Not at all. I mm -hmm. think that uh, she, when she beat Zarkenda at Cheltenham, coming up the hill, she was very strong towards the finish, hard on still. And I can't believe that she won't be on the bridle in this race, coming to the final, fen uh, final flight, and in which case... It would take a very, very good one to beat her because she's already shown a smart turn of foot. Um, and she settles so well, so she's hardly likely to pull over the distance. And I, I think she'll be far too good for them. Well, would you go and back her at 5-2 to two this moment? It's uh, A lot of firms are not running no bet, aren't they? Yeah. So if you take 5-2, to two, I'm absolutely convinced she will go a favourite if she runs. The Irish will pile into her and she'll probably be about 6-4. to four. So you, you have 5-2. to two. I think this is a good price. OK, and Nick, is Graham too quick to dismiss the old warrior which is big bucks you could take it two ways big bucks couldn't you i mean you could take the view of connections you know from his run at cheltenham last time that would have brought him on he, you know and he blew away the cobwebs and he's tightened up since then i mean i took rather more negative view of, of that result um i did think they were too aggressive with him maybe it was the tactics given to sam twist and davis it was very very testing at cheltenham that they had a horse who's 11 years of age now, coming back off a long absence, and I didn't really see the need for them to force it as much as they did. Um, and I did think it was a sitting duck from the last, albeit I didn't expect that it was Nokara Boat that was going to be the horse that come and did him. Um, it was a funny old race that Boston Bob and Rev de Tivola, those were the horses I wanted to see in and around Big Bucks and seen him beaten, but they never ran their race. And, you know, Nokara Bow, he's an admirable horse, but you saw last time at Kelso, he's brushed aside by Long Run, who's probably not the horse he was either. Um, and for the same reason, that Fisher's Cross had the whole of the run in at Cheltenham to get past Nokara Bow, couldn't do it either. So, um, A, I was disappointed that Nokara Bow won, and B, you know, from my point of view, and it is only my point of view, so I could be completely wrong, that race could have taken more out of Big Bucks than was thought at the time, and far from bringing him on, it could have actually got taken them a long time to get over. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, he'd raise the roof if Big Bucks could do it, but he's an 11-year-old who was beaten by Nokara Bow, and I just can't get that out of my mind. In, in his pomp, Nokara Bow wouldn't have got within 25, 30 lengths of Big Bucks. No, that's, that's a fair comment. I mean, the aforementioned at Fisher's Cross there is one of two potential runners for the, uh, the J.P. McManus Silks, along with more of that. Out of the two of those, any of those uh, grabbing your attention? Well, I mean, I just made the point about that Fisher's Cross. I can't believe that he couldn't get past Nokara Bow on the running, on, on the course and on ground that he handles. Um, it was you a know, step back in the right direction, though, wasn't step it? Step back in the right direction. I mean, he, his, obviously he'd had his problems in his first two runs. You could see that. And it wasn't his proper running at Ascot, I wouldn't have said. But still, his jumping was very disappointing. Comes with risks attached. And there's no margin, really, in his price, I don't think. More of that is more of an unknown. Whether they're going to run two against each other. Of course, they're in the same ownership. JP Gwintmanis, I don't know. Um, quite impressive when he beat Salubrious at Cheltenham, although he did, you know, Salubrious wasn't suited, I don't think, by making his own running that day. So I thought it was a better effort from Salubrious than it was from more of that, because I think the race was completely not run to, to his liking. Um, so I don't really like either of the JP pair, and I wouldn't be surprised if more of that didn't turn up and they relied on that Fisher's Cross, but I don't particularly like him on what I saw at Cheltenham last time. OK, well, I'll throw it to you then, Nick. Outside of those that we mentioned, I mean, is it Rule the World? Is it Sarkander? 
What would be your, your idea of a bet then to take on those at the top of the market? Well, I think the rule of the world, you, you'd have to give a strong chance to, although he's not, you know, I wish I'd been saying this like three or four weeks ago when he's better priced because single figures now. Um, but there is quite a lot of danger that lurks within from the Paul Nichols camp, I think, and certainly if he lets Salubrius take his chance, then I would be quite interested in him at decent price. I mean, he, you know, he won at the Cheltenham Festival last year, albeit it was only the Martin Pike race, but he did it very easily. Um, and he showed improvement this season, I think, and was slightly unlucky, I think, in the um, in the Ascot race behind Rev de Civilo. I think he would have given him a very good race, but um, he made a bad blunder two out and was hampered when that Fisher's cross fell at the last. So although the winning margin was 10 lengths, I don't think that really reflected how the race was run. So, yeah, I mean, it's a 20, 25 to one shot, something about that, uh, that price. Um, and, you know, we don't know if Annie Power's going to go. I, I agree with G-Rod that, you know, she looks an absolute machine, but... We're no nearer to knowing now where she's going to go, and you can back a non-runner, no bet. But, you know, Salubrious goes 20, 25 to 1. I'll just take a chance on that. Oh, good. I'll take a chance with you then. And, uh, Graham, I know you can be extremely grumpy, and you, you, it sounds like you've pretty much dismissed the rest of the field, but, I mean, social media galore are flagging up Zarkandar for Paul Nichols. We've got William Kenjani, Ewan Cunningham, uh, plenty of names, I'm afraid we can't mention them all, but uh, basically saying it will improve three miles, potentially to better ground. He's obviously unexposed at that trip. Shapes like a stair these days. Can you see any logic in that? Depends the view you take on Zarkanda, and I know what he's going to disagree. But I, 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 I agree really that if there is going to be a horse that picks up the pieces, if Annie Power doesn't run, I think it will be Zarkanda. Um, I've been quite impressed actually with the way he's run this season. A lot of people have said that he's been below his form, but a couple of times he was bang there shaking up Annie Power. Although Annie Power did fresh in the second time. And at the weekend at Wincanton on a sharp two miles, which is never going to suit him. Um, he, he appeared to have melodic rendezvous in a little bit of trouble at the top of the hill, uh, the top of the straight, sorry. And um, yeah, melodic rendezvous got to him and outspeeded him. But I still thought it was a decent performance by Zarkander, and I do agree that he'll probably improve for a step up in trip. He is a bit of a warrior, isn't he? He's very, very tough. That is the argument. I mean, 10 to 1 Zarkander, 5 to 2 Annie Power. Do you think 10 to 1's. Uh, fair enough price for him to bridge the gap having been beaten convincingly twice by that man no, this season. No, he can only win if Annie Power doesn't run, but if Annie Power doesn't run, I can see him picking up pieces, can't have Big Bucks. I thought Big Bucks was uh, definite, absolute certainty to win last time out at Cheltenham when he kicked for home, turning turn for home. Uh, he was, what, two lengths clear coming to the final flight. We've all seen Big Bucks before many times. When he hit, when he's anywhere near the lead, coming up the hill, he does not get beat. So if he's getting beat by horses by like Nakorabo and that Fisher's Cross coming up that hill, it was a long, long absence though. So it was. For argument's sake, Paul Nichols had left thirty percent to work no, on, but that not interesting. I, I don't think he would have. I, I, I know I know the way Nichols trains, and, and his horses are never too far away from their peak. I, I think maybe he might have uh, deals might improve five or ten percent for the run. Don't get me wrong; I'm sure, it wouldn't have been absolutely spot on. But there's no way Nichols would have left such a high-profile horse as Big Bucks well short of his peak fitness in the way that he's suggesting. And I'll be very, very surprised if Big Bucks is able to win. However, Nichols is a great trainer, and I've seen him do it before with Corto Star, bringing him back when I thought you know he'd gone. So The roof will come off the stand yeah, if would, he achieved it, yeah. But I'll be very, very surprised if it happens. OK, then, well, and gentlemen, uh, just to conclude then, so, Graeme, you're going to be uh, Annie Power non-runner, no bet with the rest uh, in a different postcode, I presume. I would expect that's what's going to happen if Annie Power runs. OK, and Nick, you're salubrious each way? Yeah, salubrious each way with doubts around big bucks and especially at Fisher's Cross and just whether Annie Power will run, although I like her very much. OK, well, many thanks, gentlemen. And, yeah, thank you for getting in touch. Coming up in part two of our day three preview, we'll be looking at the best of the rest.